Welcome to Collector Chronicles. We got another charm video for you here today. These are gumball and vending machine charms. We're gonna do kind of a history of these, a short history, going from like the 40s up through the 80s. So these charms started out probably in the 30s or 40s as these peanut charms. I don't know if they came in a bag of peanuts or in a peanut machine of some type. They were celluloid, made in Japan. Usually they had these rayon silk-like cords my grandfather had a large collection of these that he got at the tavern and he and my mom ended up with them he would always uh, show them to my mom when she was a little girl so we're gonna have a video just on those uh, i have a whole playlist on my channel like charms and Cracker Jack. i think if you go through there uh, there's a lot of really cool videos these are pretty popular videos so these were probably the forerunner of the gumball machine and vending machine charms again i don't know if they came out of a machine there was a lot of different themes. There's a pretty uh, vast variety of these. So that's kind of like the sampling that I have. But again, my mom has a, pretty much a huge collection of those. We're gonna try to do a video with her if she'll go along with it. So these are probably from the 60s. These vending machines came in two size capsules. When I was growing up, they came in 25 or 50 cent capsules. This is like the full size one. And they had another one that was like a sphere that were like toy and joy that a lot of them had like a uh, egg sometimes even like at uh, Target I think they had like a um, like a bird that would cluck and lay an egg and those were kind of expensive those uh, vending machines but you get some good stuff in those though this right here I'm not gonna say what's in there because this is from my private stash and I'm gonna have a private stash video um, these are the other size when I was growing up, these are usually a dime. They might have gone up to 25 cents. They look kind of like an acorn. They had different color uh, tops right here. Sometimes they were clear. These capsules were sometimes kind of uh, really crummy and they could bust open really easily. Sometimes they were of higher quality like this one. So this one right here had this little uh, army guy in there. So these are all probably this size. Uh, one thing about these is they, they would use the molds early on. Some of these that were probably still in vending machines now maybe have molds that were first used in like the 40s, I would think. Some of them, I think that because they're like a World War II theme. So a lot of these have typical patriotic American themes. Like you have your, you know, cowboy Western type of stuff. You got your cowboy in a lasso. You got your buck and bronco there, like the Wyoming symbol. You got a stagecoach. Uh, you have a lot of uh there's like a uh wait that's not a saddle there's a saddle in here somewhere that's um uh the uh, big bad wolf like uh hey there little red riding hood you sure are looking good that little uh he's like up to no good right there a lot of these are really filthy from grubby little kid hands playing with them um different colors some of them are like a translucent color like this there's that saddle i was talking about there's a lot of guns too like here's a little uh, Colt automatic pistol. Um, there's a radio, like a streamlined 1940s looking radio. Um, there's a way you can date a lot of these. Uh, like some of them will have like, they'll say like class of, like a, like a graduation hat and they'll say like class of 66 or whatever. Well, you know that that mold had went back that far. Uh, there's like a Pennsylvania Route 6, so it's like a regional theme one. Another way you can date them, probably uh, one of the most common ways to accurately date them, is if they have some type of sports team uh, paraphernalia, like a football or something. Um, sometimes it'll say, like, on there, like, you know, the football team, and some of those football teams, you know, weren't around after a certain date. Like, if you have a baseball, it says, like, St. Louis Browns, it's a pretty old baseball team. So um, there's another theme that was popular, a lot of space things. Like there's like a, uh, like a spaceship, early spaceship. There's a little space cadet there, a little astronaut guy. I always like those. Animals, of course, you know, puppy dog, kitty cat. Um, these little Buddha, Buddha looking things were really popular. There's like a really pretty translucent dark blue there. So there's those. Oh yeah, I can't forget the, uh, you look at this and be like, what is that? screw ball screw ball pretty clever pretty funny oh yeah there's a um a ray gun sometimes people will, will assemble themes and then like um on etsy or ebay or whatever um put together like a charm bracelet or you know like sell a group that you can kind of do whatever with for crafting here's another box of these again i've gotten many groups of these over the years i've sold a lot of stuff um 
getting the groups, getting what I want out of it, and then reselling a group so somebody else can have fun with it. Because I have pretty particular taste in the stuff that I'll pull out. A lot of stuff that I save for myself is like an unsolved mystery or is really, really old. A lot of these are the uh, the metallic tinted, like electroplated ones. So not only do you have gold and silver, but you have, um, you know, different colors tinted, like, you know, like a pinkish rose color or whatever. Um, a lot of these, talking about the history of them, they started out as like metal, metal charms. Like this is solid cast brass. Um, this is some type of metal park bench. Um, some of them are like a, uh, like a lead material, like this uh, lead skull right there, like a pot metal type material. So those probably date pretty far back. So that park bench, where'd it go? I got the park bench in here somewhere. Yeah, well, there's a park bench in here somewhere that's the exact same park bench out of plastic. So you can see where they use the molds. So one thing about, oh yeah, I had set it off to the side. Duh. One thing about using these molds. So maybe the mold was in the United States in the 40s. And then they outsourced to like Hong Kong or something in the 60s. And then they would just keep, keep the mold going because it was still a, you know, a relevant, you know, gumball machine toy. So one thing about that, and like I said, they use these those molds for like army men too. As the mold gets used over the years, it would uh, have a tendency to deteriorate. So the quality might not be all there. Some of these metal charms are actually like metal dips somehow. And you know that because some of them that were in unfavorable conditions, the um, like climate wise, the metal um, dip will shell will like start to pop off. That's like a uh, see no or speak no evil monkey, like the three monkeys. So you will encounter these where that shell is popping off. So some of the things that end up into the gumball machine stream of production would be like this one that originally was like a 176 scale miniature military miniature, like with model kits and stuff. So you had like a box of like 60 or 70, you know, British paratroopers or Africa Corps or whatever. And then somehow that mold would end up being used to make little you know crummy um vending machine capsule toys so like i said you know this this with all that plastic flashing that wouldn't pass the muster for a uh, for a military miniature so yeah as far as these groupings stuff ends up into them and the best way to explain how that happens is imagine someone's cleaning house and there's kids and stuff and they'll have like a box or a tin and anything little is getting thrown in there if it's not getting pitched in the tra in the trash can. So that's how all kinds of other stuff get, end up in there. It becomes like a catch-all. And some of the stuff, or like a time capsule, some of the stuff that goes in there is like pretty valuable, like jewelry or military insignia or just really old stuff. Other stuff that ends up in there, like this, this was probably like some kind of perfume or something, like a, a cap, you know, kind of like a crown royal type of cap. You run into a lot of game pieces, like this um, little metal horseman. Uh, this right here is a little stamped brass pistol and it has little ears on it. I've actually, in my many years of antique dealing and collecting, I saw one of these on a postcard, like a Western themed postcard, like to make it more fancy. They had, they had one of these like uh, clamped on there from like the twenties, I think. Mm -hmm. So that would naturally end up in there. Uh, again, with game pieces, you have this little, um, fish. It's probably from like the twenties, like really old. This little stamp metal fish um somebody had oh yeah these right here you run into like little uh mixed drink ornaments when i was a little kid my uh, uncle would always have these and give them to us we always thought they were cool like little swords um i remember there was like a like a sapphire blue these mermaids were usually in that color and then she hangs on the rim of the uh, glass there so that you have the uh you know pink elephants on parade I think that is like a cartoon, like when you're drunk or something, if I remember correctly. This looks like that's one of those two. Um, translucent, hard plastic. And this, I would think, say you have like a political campaign dinner or fundraiser. And, you know, especially in the 70s, like everybody's drinking. In the 60s, you're drinking like all the time. So this would be like a, uh, like a cool, you know, appropriately themed you know thing to have on the rim of the glass or whatever they have an elephant too probably another thing you run into 
This looks like it's off of a Kepi, like blue and gray, like Civil War theme Kepi from like an amusement park, like little, um, you know, little souvenir hat. This I think came on a card with other Western looking pins, you know, like a lasso and a cowboy hat or something. That's pretty old, probably from the fifties. You got your play money that'll end up in these groupings and play money, as you probably know, came on like a blister card or in like a header bag with uh, paper currency and different stuff. So yeah, there's all kinds of play money over the years. Um, this little random thing here, it was from a little spring-loaded rocket launcher that I think was like a, a serial prize. I run into a lot of these little firemen and vehicle drivers that came in, you know, vehicles and somehow they got separated from their vehicle. Um, this thing right here, you know, I grew up in the 80s, uh, late 80s, so I have a sister, as I've mentioned, and this I think was from like, Polly Pockets or some kind of little toy that had like a little miniature girls and people in there like it opened up and it had like you know rooms and stuff that's what that reminds me of something like that um you also run into pretty old glass charms um somebody had left a comment um mentioning that uh asking the question rather is there like a crossover with um Cracker Jack toys and uh and vending machine stuff and um first of all i'd like to apologize for not responding to some of these comments in a timely manner uh, I, i'm bad about procrastinating and i got a lot of uh, things i'm juggling lately but to answer that question um for the most part no the shorter answer would be no cracker jack toys a lot of them were made by a company called nosco in like the golden age of cracker jack you know, like in the 60s when they're all the hard plastic really cool stuff like all these pretty much are cracker jack and so Cracker Jack toys, you know, they came in these um, classic well-known envelopes. And so there had to be room for the product, for the Cracker Jack snack. So this is a Cracker Jack, um, you know, umpire or catcher or whatever. So they had to be made somewhat flat usually so they could go in there. So with very few exceptions i mean if they're a cracker jack collector they know like the history of every cracker jack toy that was ever like approved for being in cracker jack you know back in like the the 20s they had ones or 30s or whatever like, i had a lot of metal ones and they had baseball cards that a lot of times are worth like i've seen them like worth like thirty thousand dollars so yeah again um you know cracker jack toy so for the most part you're not going to find Cracker Jack toys. Vending machines and Cracker Jack toys are two separately different things. Now, there were some Cracker Jack type toys that were in with um, with comic book toys. Like, there's a video I'm going to do on some uh, comic book premiums. And they had these things in there that's never been open. And they look pretty much like Cracker Jack, um, Cracker Jack stuff. Little circus animals and everything. I think that's about everything. Um, oh yeah, so I got another group that I haven't uh, processed yet. One of my mini cigar boxes. So this is some type of the uh, typical accumulation that you'll get. Um, yeah, so they got these on like a bracelet. These are all definitely vending machine. Um, this one right here, this, this uh, brand Epi is pretty uh, sought after by collectors. This little uh, pistol comes out of there i think i got another one over here where uh it's got a nice little pistol there that i might even keep that one sometimes you run into these bullets um and these bullets uh what does this one say lone ranger they're they're probably vending our vending machine but some of them they go in a gun belt of a cap gun you have a cap gun that would have like a little um not a whole belt but it was like a little thing that you could attach to your belt as a kid and it would have um, dummy bullets in there to look like you know you're a gunfighter some of them might be like electroplated so yeah um you know in, in this group this is all stuff that was in the group this is like jewelry you know like the jewelry is damaged this might even be you know from like the 30s or something kind of art deco looking there's a puzzle like 1980s puzzle a lot of these were made in japan uh conestoga wagon yeah, there's some kind of jewelry. It's pretty heavy. It's damaged, but, you know, it's a fairly decent costume jewelry brooch. Um, yeah, Hoyle, some kind of like a, uh, a gambling chip or whatever. So I think that's everything. Well, there's a little uh, PT boat. Anything military, I usually try to keep. 
So yeah, there's no end to these. People uh, do buy them a lot. They're pretty collectible. I, I think they'll continue to be collectible because people use them for a lot of stuff with crafting and everything. So that's my video. And uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.